Shelley, mm. how'd you come to find the biggest liquid gold mine in the state? I was shopping for provisions. Yeah? That's when I saw it. What'd you see, Shelley? Boxes and boxes. Velveeta shells and cheese got clear to the ceiling. <laughs> Can we go look at it, Shelley? Yeah, it's right over here. Oh! Uh, sir? You the law? We've had some complaints of... Is that a fire? There's your payoff, deputy. Get Velveeta shells and cheese. There's gold in them there shells. <laughs> Liquid gold from Kraft Velveeta shells and cheese. Well. There's one Florida woman who she sees that slogan is completely different. The liquid gold that she can get because she's filing a class action lawsuit against the company for false advertising. I mean, we just saw a little bit of their advertising, try and figure out where it was false. In fact, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you. A Florida woman is accusing Kraft Heinz of misleading advertising based on the time it takes to prepare a single serving cup of microwavable mac and cheese. Now, while the company markets its Velveeta shells and cheese as being, quote, ready in three and a half minutes, Amanda Ramirez says that that's only the amount of time each cup needs to be microwaved and not the actual preparation process from stirring the water to letting the cheese sauce thicken takes longer. She does not specify how much longer it takes though, but it's definitely longer than three and a half minutes. Now, this 15 page class action lawsuit filed earlier this month alleges that the parent company, Kraft Heinz, sells more of the product at a higher price than it would if it didn't mislead consumers about the pasta's prep time. Now, um, in case anyone uh, you know wants to wonder about uh, the board, uh, the, wants to get on board with this whole thing and whether or not you can get on board, because I was thinking, hey, I've bought that stuff before. Maybe not the liquid gold one, but maybe I can get on this class action lawsuit. The lawsuit seeks more than five million dollars of damages and looks to cover consumers in Alabama, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Utah, New Mexico, Alaska, Iowa, Tennessee, and Virginia. So if you guys are in those states, you might get on board. Who purchased the mac and cheese cups during the applicable statute of limitations period? It says there are more than 100 such customers since the product is sold online and in stores across the country. That's a pretty good payout for those 100 folks, huh? or more than 100 folks. Now, uh, there's a, another aspect of this uh, as far as their attorneys and their defense of this because uh, David, first I wonder, are you for or against Miss Amanda Ramirez in her class action lawsuit? Three and a half minutes. I, I have to say I'm, I'm against her, but first let me say, you know, when you first started playing that video, the, the cowboys around the campfire, I thought <clears throat> that you were showing video of Emily's camping trip in Texas. And that's what we were <laughs> gonna see. And this is perhaps her in-laws or somebody like that who was gonna be playing around. Um, but you know, if you're gonna go Yeehaw. after somebody for, mis <laughs> for misleading advertising, um, you know, this isn't it. It would be like saying, I'm gonna sue um, Velveeta because, you know, they suggested I can make a campfire in a grocery store. And funny, the physics don't work out that way, so I'm gonna sue them. I mean, this is this is kind of nonsense. Everybody knows that it takes at least a couple of minutes to make mac and cheese. And if, if that bothers you, then eat something else. She has to run a video, I'd bet. Like, we put the kitchen timer on three and a half minutes and see that it actually takes much longer. <laughs> uh, Will Wright disagrees with you, though. He's one of her attorneys. He's defending his case against folks like you, David. He said, okay. there are a lot of people out there that may feel this is just a little <laughs> fibbing and not really a case that I, that, uh, and I get that, he said. But we're striving for something better. Hmm. We want corporate America to be straightforward and truthful in advertising their products. In fact, the lawsuit says Ramirez fully intends to purchase the same product again, quote, when she can do it, do so with the assurance uh, its representations are, constitu are constituent with its abilities, attributes, and or composition. Nice. Until then, though, it adds, she's unable uh, to rely on the labeling and marketing of not only this microwavable Mac, but of other similar products that claim they'll be ready in a specific amount of time because she's unsure whether those representations are truthful as well. They've already lied to her, David, and now she can't figure this out. There's another attorney though, his name is Spencer Sheehan. Don't forget his name, because he's known for these types of cases. He's filed more than 400 similar lawsuits like this, and he has something to say in defense as well. Some of his other recent cases included accusing Frito-Lay of not using enough real lime juice and it's hint of lime Tostito chips, that one's pending. And alleging that Kellogg misrepresents the amount of fruit in its strawberry pop tarts. Somebody warn John Adarola. A federal judge dismissed, dismissed that one earlier this year. Many of his cases get voluntarily dismissed, presumably settled rather than going to trial. And that is the point here, David. That's why we do it. Uh, but the reason I told you guys to look out for Spencer Sheehan, one more point about Spencer Sheehan, there's other lawsuits that have gone around. Totino's uh, has a class action lawsuit that alleges that their frozen cheese pizza rolls do not meet customer expectations of quote, 
pizza. <laughs> I think uh, Sheehan was on that one. Yeah, the plaintiff represented by Spencer Sheehan of Sheehan Associates was on that one as well. He files these things and apparently gets some results. Look, I, I agree that you know, look, Little Caesars to me doesn't meet the equivalent definition of pizza. Am I going to sue Little Caesars? No, I'm just not going to not going to eat it. Um, if, if people look, I agree to the extent that these corporations, yes, they are profiting in ways that make me sick, and they're I think their prices are a lot higher than they need to be. That's where I think these lawsuits should be going to try to figure out, okay, why is it? Are these companies engaged in price gouging? Are they taking the fact that inflation is up and raising the price of Velveeta mac and cheese by a certain percentage point that can't be justified and they're Therefore, they're taking advantage of people who can least afford it. Go after that, but to go after them for the cooking time, or because it's not the right style of definition of pizza, or because you know Coke is not the real thing; it doesn't exist in the natural world. How could it be the real thing? I mean, to make those kinds of arguments, which these sorts of people do, um, I think just sort of takes attention away from the, the larger focus. Maybe I can change your mind here, David. Okay. Also, earlier this year in April, I believe. Let's go to Burger King, you guys. Burger King advertisements, they uh, they dropped a lawsuit on Burger King too. Burger King advertisements portray the company's burgers with <laughs> quote, oversized meat patties and ingredients that overflow over the bun to make it appear that the burgers are approximately 35% larger in size and contain more than double the meat is what this lawsuit said back in April. But according to photos included with the lawsuit, customers are paying for puny uh, ersatz versions of what's shown in ads. The, comp, uh, the complaint cites tweets from angry customers and media reports to argue that the problem is widespread. So my hands are are, are, are my hands getting smaller or the or get bigger or are the burgers getting smaller? We just don't know what's going on. You know, the Whoppers seem pretty big to me. Even the Impossible Burger looks pretty big. And I get now that people pointed out that, yeah, it does look like the meat sort of spills out of the bun. And so it gives a sort of illusion that there's a lot of meat in there and maybe there's not as much. But really, this is what? People are upset about? Absolutely. My next question is, this burger wasn't juicy like the commercial. <laughs> Try, it's been sitting under a heat lamp. I'm not gonna- I only got three onions instead of six. <laughs> you know what, I'm gonna sue you, really? You're a bad guy.